Welcome back. I'm Matt Sargent with Efficiency Vermont. Today we're going to look at wall insulation. We'll see various kinds of insulation, different types of wall configurations, and we'll get a chance to look at some tricky details. So come on along with me and let's have a look. Since this home is a duplex, it's got this party wall or common wall between the two units. You can see here the 2x4 frame and then it's got sheetrock and then it's got a 2x4 wall on the other side of this sheetrock. So there's another living unit on the other side of this wall. This wall is on an outside wall, but it does need to be detailed to keep air from moving from one unit to another unit. It's good to compartmentalize the air movement between the two. They've done a great job at that. You can see the sealant here at the bottom plate. They've also sealed the connection where it meets the outside wall and where it meets the attic. So this whole wall, if you can imagine, is a, is a complete air barrier between the two units. They've done a great job with this wall. Here we are at an uninsulated wall. You can see the cavity, which is formed by the studs on the left and right, the sheathing in the back, the top plate, and the bottom plate. It's important when we fill this cavity with insulation to make sure that the insulation is in contact with all six sides of the cavity, left, right, back, front, top, and bottom. If we look down here at the bottom plate, we can see a great air sealing detail here. This keeps air from leaking in between the subfloor and the bottom plate. Another great detail can be seen over here in the corner, where they've left this corner open so that the insulation can come all the way back and fill the whole corner. Let's go take a look at what an insulated wall cavity looks like. This wall has no vapor control layer because it's got a heated space on the other side of it. It's essentially an interior wall between the two units. This outside wall has a poly vapor barrier on it. It's a four mil poly, and its job is to keep vapor from diffusing into the wall where it can condense and cause problems out there. We can see here in the corner where they've done a great job with the corner insulation. It's fluffed out to the front of the studs. It looks good. It gets all the way back into the corner. One of the things we try to do in every house is to keep the warm air inside. And one of the key ways to do that is to make sure that an area like this where the joists run out into the garage, we have solid blocking in each joist bay. They're gonna come in and spray foam over the top of this. So the blocking that you're looking at is really a backer, but this is a really crucial piece right here in terms of trying to keep the air in the house. They're just about to blow the closed cell spray foam in the band joist. This is a great technique in terms of getting thermal barrier and the air barrier and the vapor control layer all in one shot. Um, let's take a look and see how they do this. The band joist needs to be insulated to the same R value as the walls. In this case, the builder's looking for R21, which is about three and a half inches of spray foam. Now, closed cell spray foam needs to be applied in thin layers. Once the foam is sprayed, it expands as it cures. The foam needs to set up before the installer can add another layer to build it up to its desired thickness. Another detail that bears mentioning here is where this partition wall meets the exterior wall. That's this wall out here. Um, they've turned this nailer on edge behind the partition wall so that they can get full insulation all the way behind here um, and it's not restricted by the partition wall. It's a great detail here. Also, behind the tub, it's important that we have an air barrier. The tub doesn't act as an air barrier and the insulation needs to be enclosed on all six sides of the cavity. So what they've done here is they've insulated these walls and then put this OSB up and then they built this out and put the tub onto there. So that wall has enclosure on all six sides of the cavity and a good air barrier behind the tub. When installing fiberglass bats, paying attention to details is important. This guy makes it look easy. He's doing a great job of splitting the insulation around the electrical wires and boxes, which ensures full coverage behind the wire without compressing the insulation. We're in a room now above an unheated garage, often referred to as a bonus room. Behind me is a knee wall, and on the back side of this knee wall is the unheated garage, and on the inside is this heated space. Because the insulation in this cavity will need to be enclosed on all six sides, they put up this sheathing on the back side of the wall to act as an air barrier. It'll have sheetrock on the front of the wall to act as the air barrier on the inside. I'm sitting on a duct chase. Now, Efficiency Vermont does not allow ducts to be outside the thermal envelope, so they had to bring the ducts inside. They can't be in the floor, they can't be in the wall. 
they put them in this chase, which is a great idea. And when they built this chase, they made sure to include some OSB on the back side of it, which will act as the air barrier for the bottom part of this knee wall. Did a great job on these details. Um, and this makes a nice little bench to sit on. We're gonna have R60 in the slopes, R80 in the flat ceilings, and R40 in the walls. These are double stud walls, um, very thick cavities everywhere. And so Kevin's gone ahead with the three inch hose and loose filled all the cavities to get the bulk of the insulation in there. He's following up now with the smaller hose in order to dense pack these cavities. At three and a half pounds a cubic foot, cellulose can't settle, but we have to really dense pack it in there at that three and a half pounds if we wanna get a good job. Kevin's just finishing this wall bay here. He's inserted the dense pack hose all the way in and as the cavity packs up, he's pulling the hose out. And I think he's just about done with this one. He's got to get a little more in the top. He's dense packing this to R40 at three and a half pounds per cubic foot. So he's following along now with the dense pack hose to top off what he did with the, the larger loose fill hose earlier. Kevin's following himself back around the bays that he's just dense packed and he's taping up the holes where the hose went through the vapor control layer. It's a real high performance tape. It sticks real well. You have to apply some pressure to it to get it to seal, and then it's there forever. Now that Kevin's taped off the bay, I'm gonna come in here and roll the cellulose back so that we don't get any big lumps in the drywall. Thanks for joining us today. In this episode, the pros showed us how they install fiberglass insulation in a code level wall. We saw some great detailing on a common wall between two units in a duplex, and we learned about installing dense pack cellulose in a double stud wall in this high performance modular home. These are just a couple examples of the many different ways to insulate and air seal a wall. For more information about your project, give us a call. Until next time, I'm Matt Sargent at Efficiency Vermont.